My name is Nadina Gali, and I'll be leading the workshop today. And with me, I have Esme Koimam. Esme, give a little wave. Esme is a researcher within the Connecting Nature Project and uh, one of the initiators of the Connecting Nature Enterprise Platform. And Esme will be helping uh, me guide you all through the workshop today. So to kick off, let's just brief moment to discuss what are nature-based enterprises. So nature-based enterprise is defined as using nature as a core element of an enterprise's product or service offering. Using nature means uh, that uh, nature can be used directly by growing or harnessing or harvesting or restoring natural resources in a sustainable way and or indirectly contributing to the planning delivery, delivery or stewardship of sustainable nature-based enterprises. There are also nature-based organizations that fit the description of a nature-based enterprise, uh, but may uh, be publicly owned or not have trading revenue. So why do we need nature-based enterprises and why are they important? Well, if you look at the number of nature-based enterprises, you can see that it is increasing uh, year on year, likely in response to the demand for, of course, the flip side of the coin, nature-based solutions. And ultimately, nature-based enterprises support cities, the private sector, and third sector organizations in the planning, delivery, and management of nature-based solutions. So the Connecting Nature Enterprise platform, which if you're not already registered on the platform, I highly register your nature organization um, if you haven't and the platform you do is provide a global database of nature based prizes but also online marketplace for both buyers and sellers of nature based solutions to help uh, financing and a multitude of other opportunities like research collaboration or partnerships and a really critical part of the platform the reason why we're here today is that at the heart of the connecting nature enterprise platform are these communities of interest and these cover everything, as you can see here, from community engagement to nature-based solutions for green buildings, for water management to sustainable forestry. And of course, today we'll be kicking off the smart technologies for nature-based that you lead workshop uh, to inspire and feeling like this is something that you can apply of course, to your own work. But first, just to quickly describe, how did we get here? So while we fight to keep our cities green and make them greener, there is another common urban discourse that most of us at this point have heard of course of smart cities. And whether we like it or not, our cities are also going digital. And smart cities are putting data and technology to work to drive efficiency and improve the quality of life for all citizens. Yet, what we're seeing now is that the very natural capital on which these cities rely risks being left behind by the digital revolution. And these two discourses seem to run parallel to one another in their own kind of unique silos. So I've, in my recent work, have become increasingly focused on how smart cities may actually change the way that we manage our urban natural capital or our nature-based solutions. So this last year, uh, Sophie Nidoslowski, a PhD student at the University of British Columbia, myself, together with two other colleagues, uh, Cecil Koninendijk from the Nature-Based Solutions Institute and James Steenberg from Dalhousie University, uh, wrote a paper on this. And we wanted to understand how you could use technology for the enhanced management of green infrastructure more broadly. So we did a, a comprehensive literature review that really revealed two main interacting themes. The first was the use of smart applications to actually enhance the delivery of green benefits and ecosystem services. So in other words, how can we make the delivery of these ecosystem services provided by trees, trees and green spaces more effective and more efficient? This may be through data loggers, sensor networks, remote sensing, and other kind of various applications of both artificial intelligence and machine learning that may, again, help us enhance these green benefits. 
The second main theme that we saw throughout this work is the use of smart applications for actually improving stakeholder engagement and participation, particularly of citizens in the whole nature-based solutions movement. Examples of citizen science illustrate this particularly well, where you can have connected and mobile devices like smart phones and other kind of open source platforms that allow for stewardship and management opportunities. So if you're interested in learning more, I highly suggest you check out that paper. And if you don't have access to it, please reach out to me and I'll make sure that you have a that you get a copy. So throughout this work, we quickly realized that the opportunity was ripe to develop a framework for this. And we called this framework the Internet of Nature. And it's a novel concept that uses digital technologies and smart applications to elicit information from urban ecosystems and allow for automation, self-organization and self-regulation. A lot of the inspiration came behind the idea that in forested areas, trees are connected by this underground biological communication network made up of mycorrhizal fungi. And when you actually plant trees or other kind of nature areas within cities, that mycorrhizal network can actually get disrupted. So the inspiration for me really came from this with this idea, well, if that natural biocommunications network is disrupted in cities, how can we using technology as humans step in and become better stewards for this nature in cities? And the Internet of Nature is all about researching and incubating these next frontiers in urban ecosystem management so that we might actually come closer to bridging what I believe is still a wide gap between the concept of smart cities and green cities. And the workshop that we'll be doing together today will actively contribute to that. Now, the, um, the Internet of Nature will connect and uh, emerging technologies in kind of a whole host of, of multiple of different ways. Um, so we can look at things like drones for pest detection, plant identification apps uh, for crowdsourcing biodiversity information, IoT sensor networks, satellite imagery, mining social media, all of these uh, different kind of technologies can help us kind of elicit this new data. So I'll take you through just a few case studies and examples to hopefully also get you inspired and, uh, and pumped for the workshop. So one such example is Treepedia. And rather than counting individual trees, Treepedia by MIT Sensible City Lab developed a scalable and universally applicable method that uses Google Street View imagery to classify street tree canopies. By using Google Street View rather than satellite imagery, we can actually start to understand the human perception of the environment from the street level and make better policy decisions for street tree planting and maintenance. Another example is TreeMania. TreeMania develops and deploys Internet of Things soil sensors to actually collect data on soil moisture, temperature, electrical conductivity, pH, and oxygen in real time and automatically send those updates to a dashboard. So, a great use case of this is in Europe, uh, 11 of the 12 warmest and dry, driest years have actually occurred in the past two decades. Uh, this is deadly, especially when it comes to tree establishment. And in the Netherlands, um, where I'm based, uh, where like very many places, a severe drought caused significant tree loss in the summers of 2018 and 2019, tree mania sensors collected data on soil moisture content and would actually send emails or SMS updates straight to the tree manager's phone. And when those updates were acted upon, had a 99% success rate of actually keeping newly planted trees alive. And this particular case study was 1,000 new linden trees that were planted on top of a tunnel. And four years after those have been planted, they've only lost one tree. When the tree manager in charge was expecting, they would lose at least 15, 20, maybe even 30% of that tree stock, which is pretty typical when it comes to planting trees in cities. Another kind of fun application of this is the citizen engagement side, where you can actually plant these uh, sensors or bury these sensors. They did this in, the, in a Dutch village in the south of the country, where they planted these sensors um, next to trees in a town square. And instead of tree managers, neighboring residents actually received the watering updates. Um, so this kind of promoted this fun citizen engagement perspective um, that you know when a tree needs water uh, and where. One last example that I'll leave you with is researchers at North Carolina State University actually used a robot to capture 360 degree high resolution images of a downtown Rayleigh Plaza and a city park. And by manipulating the vegetation to create these immersive virtual reality scenarios, uh, you could basically 
an illicit values about the park designs and tree arrangements from these virtual visitors. And this method, although still in an early phase, um, helped kind of constitute an integrative public consultation process for new green infrastructure projects. And in Rayleigh, it's already helped encourage decision makers to critically assess tree density across multiple urban settings. One of the more interesting findings that came out of this research is that in dense urban cores, people tended to prefer really dense uh, trees versus in parks, they actually preferred a much more low density of trees. And that all had to do with the perception of safety that they had. So this was, was really quite, quite interesting, not only from a research perspective, but from a very practical application as well too. So to sum up, I hope you feel um, inspired by some of these uh, exciting uh, power of the Internet of Nature examples. And without further ado, we're going to kick off the interactive proportion of this workshop. So I'm going to have uh, Esme on the back end help me with dividing uh, you all up into breakout rooms. And this is what you're going to do in your breakout room. Within your assigned breakout room, you're going to have three minutes, so just three minutes, to brainstorm pressing issues in the design, planning, financing, or management of nature-based solutions. And you only have three minutes, so please, um, if you feel uh, you know you connected with someone, please connect with them after the workshop uh, over email or over LinkedIn or over the Connecting Nature Enterprise platform. Uh, but don't spend any time on introductions here because your time will be up before you know it. So please uh, spend uh, three minutes brainstorming these pressing, pressing issues. And when you all come back to the main room, be prepared to share some of these pressing issues in the chat box afterwards, which we'll ask you to do. So without further ado, Esme will divide you up into breakout rooms and we'll see you back here in three minutes. of a wrap up to what we did today and then um, we'll actually go through a little part of the Connecting Nature Enterprise uh, platform at all as well. So uh, to sum up, uh, first of all, thank you so much for your participation here. Uh, Esme and I were, this is our first time doing this kind of workshop in a virtual setting. Uh, so it was definitely a little bit of um, testy waters to see if everything was going to work out. So big thank you to Esme who made sure everything in the back end was going smoothly with breakout rooms and polling. And thank you so much to all of you for, for participating um, with such great enthusiasm. We really, really appreciate it because it's you guys that make a workshop for what it's, what it's all about, which is about connecting like-minded people within this community. So thank you. And I hope you feel inspired by the Internet of Nature and feel like it might be something that you can apply in, own, in, in your own work. And all of the ideas discussed and pitched today, I think really helps us gain a better understanding and better data eventually on urban ecosystems so that we can all kind of better understand all of its complex components. And I think it's important to remember that technology has drastically impacted nature in the last 10 years through our kind of emerging ability to achieve this almost near constant monitoring of these valuable natural assets. And we are already creating this powerful nexus. And now it's just a matter of moving this Netflix nexus into cities. So if you haven't already, we encourage you to uh, bring all of these uh, ideas and discussion to the Connecting Nature Enterprise platform, specifically a lot of what we have on the platform, um, which actually, as May, if you wanted to uh, share the platform, your, she your screen to show the platform, one of the things that we're quite proud about on the platform, it has the opportunity to share both opportunities and challenges. And I think a lot of the pressing issues that were discussed today uh, would serve very well as possible, um, a possible challenges on, um, on the platform, as well as a lot of, of course, the ideas that were pitched today would offer excellent uh, opportunities. So, um, as May, I'll hand the reins over to you to uh, just give a little bit of a demo about how the platform looks. Yes, um, so I hope you can all see my screen, right? Yes. Okay, okay. Yeah, so just to um, add a bit on what Nadina said and um, what, what we did in the workshop today. So this is the um, Connecting Nature Enterprise platform. And the aim of the platform is basically to um, connect uh, sellers of nature-based solutions of um, uh, and of products that are um, um, enhancing nature in a way or monitoring it in a way 
which buyers of it. And buyers could be cities, but it could also be, uh, of course, uh, private organizations, uh, if you think of green buildings, etc. So how it's set up basically is uh, we have communities. So the, green, the smart uh, technologies for MBS is one community, but as you can see, we have uh, quite some other communities as well. Um, and uh, yeah, if you go to a community, you would have, sorry, my, inter my internet is a bit slow. Um, wait for this to load. <laughs> if you go to the community, so all the communities have pages like this with um, uh, community members. So this uh, is one enterprise that we featured now, but this, this changes um, every month or so. Then there's uh, community members. And this is basically the first um, community workshop uh, for those members and other people that are interested uh, in this or work in this field. Uh, yeah, we of course have some some new, some relevant uh, events happening. Um, and uh, yes, we have opportunities and challenges. And uh, as Nadine said before, the opportunities are basically um, any any collaboration project, any grant, any uh, tender, any basically anything that would be relevant uh, for the sector and for uh, organizations working in this sector. Uh, and then challenges um, is basically the goal of the challenges is basically um, working, working together, collaborate uh, and help each other out with uh, because there's a lot of um, mutual challenges that the sector has being such a new sector and uh, especially this sector working with te technology. So uh, yeah, you can, if you are a member of the platform, you can post challenges and opportunities. Um, I think that is about it. If you, yeah, if you haven't signed up to the platform yet, uh, please do so. I think I'll put a link in the chat now. Uh, Nadina, I don't know if you wanted um anything else and mute here we go and as i mentioned earlier i mean we of course rudely told you that you could not introduce yourselves in your breakout room so i hope that at least you've been able to get to know each other a little bit and encourage you to connect with each other over the platform uh, as as may said these are um these are brand new this is a brand new sector that we're moving into and with a lot of mutual challenges and opportunities so purpose of this workshop was, was bringing some of you together to hopefully kind of be able to discuss, network with one another, get to know each other, and hopefully, of course, continue the conversation on the Connecting Nature Enterprise platform. Uh, so with that, thank you so much for your participation. Um, as may just, uh, I think, just put the link into the chat box. Here it is, link to the platform. So we encourage you to continue the conversation. And thank you so much, all of you, for your active participation and fantastic creative ideas. Uh, and uh, we look forward to seeing you again soon. Uh,